Ang sinalong na ang mga residente ng bawat barangay. Dito rin pinag-uusapan ng mga piling hanggang na opisyal na barangay ang mga proyekto para sa kanilang barangay. Kumustahin natin ang panunungkulan ni Kapitan dito sa Dama Barangay sa Millennial Online TV Worldwide ang katropa ng bawat barangay. Sa Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagdalo at uh, tapos na po ang ating uh, session. Sadyo na po tayo. Hanap mo ba ay Unwind Ventures? Tara nang mamangha sa mga tanawin. Ano ba ng iyong travel goals? Dadali namin kayo. Sa Anwai Adventures at saya! sa wow biyahe. Kaya wow, di ba? Abangan, dito lang sa Millennial Online TV. Be lighting! Be lalakas! Ang bagong news online TV ng bagong milenyo. Millennial Online TV Ang katropa mo sa pagbabalita Mga katropa, ako po si Randel Villados ang online naranista ng bagong milenyo ng Millennial Online TV na nagaanyaya sa inyo na makikanta, makisaya, at tumutok sa lahat ng programa ng Millennial Online TV. I-type lamang sa inyong Facebook at YouTube ang Millennial Online TV. Nood na mga katropa! Ako'y niyong lingkod, Rosel Lopez, ang inyong katropa, ang inyong kabarangay, dito sa Millennial Online TV. Abangan ang ating mga kaganapan dito sa ating bansa at abangan din ang panunungkol ni Kapitan sa ating dalaw barangay. Paano nyo kami mapapanood? Itype lamang sa inyong mga cellphone, sa inyong Facebook at YouTube, ang Millennial Online TV. Ano pa hinihintay nyo mga katropa? Like, subscribe, at share na. Okay mga katropa? Mga katropa, ako po si Gazi Sarip, ang inyong tagapaghatid ng balita sa bagong milenyo, na nag-aanyaya sa inyo natunghaya ng aking mga pag-uulat at tumutok sa lahat ng programa dito sa Millennial Online TV. Itype lamang sa inyong Facebook at YouTube ang Millennial Online TV. Nood na mga katropa! Be lighting! Be lalakas! Ang bagong news online TV ng bagong milenyo. Millennial Online TV ang katropa mo sa pagbabalita. Ikaw ba'y nag-iisa? Nanulungkot. Dahil iniwan at ipinagpalit. Niloko ng iyong minamahal. Kung ngayon, itype sa inyong mga cellphone, Facebook o YouTube man ang Millennial Online TV. Dahil nasa Millennial Online TV na ang online haranista ng bagong milenyo, si Randall Villados. Nanini ka 
sang aking katawan kapag umigot sa ang plata. At haharanahin kayo ni Randel ng iba't ibang awitin para maibisan ang iyong inip at kalungkutan kahit nasaan man kayo. Hanggang sa tumanda. Tumanda. Matanda na Sana'y di tayo magbago At, At pwede rin kayong makiduit kay Randel tuwing Sabado ng hapon Tutok na! Tawag na mga milenyo! Araw-araw ikaw ang gusto kong kasama Buhay ko'y kumpleto na Tuwing nandito ka Sa tabi ko o oh, aking giliw Mga millennials, marunong na ba kayong magluto ng mga masasarap at swak sa budget ng mga pagkain? Abay, huwag puro lang kayo AXI at ML at puro pagkakalikot lang ng cellphone. Dapat marunong ka rin sa gawaing bahay at tulungan ang inyong mga mamsi. Kaya tara na, samahan natin ang kusinera ng bagong milenyo, si Ate J. At tuturuan tayong magluto ng mga masasarap na ulam para sa ating mga hapagkainan at swak pa sa budget. Ika nga, a delicious food on a proper price. Tara na, mga katropa! I-type lang sa inyong mga cellphone, sa inyong mga Facebook at YouTube ang Millennial Online TV. Now, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, well, the biggest destruction of dangerous drugs worth one Revisahin, opinion, malawakin, aksyonan Kasama si Rosel Lopez, ang inyong katropa sa pagbabalita Dito lang sa Millennial Online TV Tutok na mga katropa! Mga milenyo, pagod ka na ba galing sa trabaho? At gutom na sa maghabong pagkatrabaho, pero wala kang pagkain sa bahay. Narito na ang sagot mga katropa, ang Superman of Lechon na papawi sa inyong gutom at siguradong mapapaanerize ka dahil sa tender juicy na jambo pa at siguradong malinis at bagong katay buhat sa farm. Kaya super masalasa at pangmasa pa. Ano pa hinihintay niyo mga katropa? Takbo na sa Superman o Pantenyo Siniluan at bumili na baka maabusan ka, katropa. Guys, mo bang guminhawa ang iyong pakiramdam? Kung ikaw ay may sipon, ubo, lagnat at iba pang nararamdaman, lalo na ang sakit ng katawan, Narito ng Yasmag Magnesium Therapy Oil. Ang Yasmag Magnesium Therapy Oil ay nakatutulong na ipsa ng iyong nararamdaman sa pamamagitan ng pagpahit sa apektadong parte ng katawan, gaya ng noo, balikat, tuhod at kung anuman ang masakit na parte ng iyong katawan. Panoorin ang mga testimonials ng gumamit ng Yasmag. Yan po, ginagamit niya. Siya po ay isa sa aking mga testimony. Ako? Si Destino Francisco ay gumagamit ng Yasmag na siyang nakapagpalakad sa akin. Kaya kayo, mga kaibigan ko at kakilala, ay pinapayuhan kong gumamit ng product na ito. Isa sa ating testimony, uh, ikukwento po niya sa inyo yung kanyang uh, result nung siya ay isang linggo ng nilalagnat at uh, giniginaw ng hihina. 
Hi, uh, ako po si Rina Liliantos, uh, 29 years old, taga Sariaya, Quezon po. Uh, nangyari po sa akin, itong mga nakaraang araw po ay hindi po hindi ko po maintindihan yung pakiramdam ko, gawa po ang sakit po sobra ng likod ko, uh, nilalagnat ako, tapos po ay, ay hindi lang po isang linggo ang nararamdaman ko. Simula po nung July 30 hanggang itong araw, hanggang nung mga nakaraang araw. Yun lang po, na wala lang po nang dahil sa sa magnesium. Paano ang, ginawa mo? Ang ginawa lang po sa akin ay ipinahinaplas po sa akin likod kung saan ang parte ng katawan ang masakit. Tapos po ay hinilot lang po ako. At hanggang po ay hanggang po pagpawisan ako sa pagkahilot na may magnesium. Ayun lang po, sunod-sunod po ang paglagay, paglagay kung saan banda ang may masakit. At yun po, yun nga po, uh, ilang araw lang sa paggamit ko ng magnesium, ako mismo, sarili ko, uh, ramdam ko ang pagbabago sa aking katawan. Dahil po simula nga po nung Januwa, uh, July 30 hanggang itong bago, ma, bago itong, ano, itong mga nakaraang araw lang, hindi ako halos makatayo dahil sa sobrang sakit ng aking likod. Ako po si Leslie. Uh, first time ko po mag-try nitong Yas Mag Magnesium Therapy. Uh, ang una ko pong naramdaman ay eh, ang bango niya, ang bango niya sa ano, ang bango niya lang happen, nakaka-relax ng katawan and then yung sakit na iniinda ko sa puso, yung sakit-sakit hindi -sakit, uh, wala naman ako sakit sa puso pero yung mga kirot-kirot nawala niya, instant na wala. Natagal ko nang iniinda. And then hindi siya malagkit ipahid. Mga balita at pangyayaring magalap sa buong magdamag. Ihimayin, tatalakayin, ibabalita, ngayon na, dito lang sa Millennial Online TV News Rika. Nagbabasa ka pa ba ng dyaryo? O nakikinig ka pa ba ng radyo? Kung ngayon, Wachan ay mapapakinggan nyo na sa inyong mga cellphone. Dahil online na tayo, mga kamilenyo. Kaya manood, makinig, dito sa Millennial Online TV. Riders, sumalpok sa Kaya poste ng i-follow, like, subscribe, at ishare na mga katropa. Equally dynamic members of our legislative body, our equally dynamic department and section heads, my fellow rank and file employees, our PNP in Malay, BFP in Malay, friends, yes, visitors, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to our Monday's flag raising ceremony. We, the Office of the Municipal Treasurer, protest to lead before you 
this Monday's flag raising ceremony, headed of course by our very decisive and gorgeous <laughs> municipal treasurer, Miss Josephine F. Anchiboy. Let us give her a warm round of applause. And we, our office, the municipal treasurer's office, want to, wants to instill with you these very powerful words for us to ponder on this morning. First, we should believe in ourselves. Second, we should stay strong. Third, we as employees should never give up. Fourth, we should always be grateful. Fifth, work hard. Six, stay humble. Seven, be kind. And lastly, sana gawin po natin palagi, we should keep on smiling. So kahit na naka-face mask po sana tayo, we should not forget to smile. Salamat po. And for us this part, may I request everyone to everyone to please stand for our prayer. To be led by our very hardworking police lieutenant Colonel Genevieve Poblete and to be followed immediately by the singing of our Philippine National Anthem and the station of the Pananumpa ng Katapatan sa Watawat and Pananumpa ng Lingkod Bayan to be led by our very hardworking police officers and also to be followed by the singing of our Philippine National Anthem, Bin Mali Him, Pangasinan Him and Bin Mali Him through an audio presentation. Once again, may request everyone to please stand. Let us all bow down heads in prayer. God, our Father, we praise and thank you for the gift of work. You give us means for living a life worthy of a human person. But more than that, you give us opportunities to cultivate our talents and creativity. Grant us the spirit of truth that our work may reflect our uniqueness and dignity as persons. Let us rise above personal interest so that we can work together for the common good. May we not take credit for the work done by others. Rather, may we acknowledge the giftedness of, all, of our co-workers and be inspired to contribute new ways and ideas to the organization that we belong to. Grant us the spirit of humility to accept our mistakes, learn from them, and be determined not to commit the same mistakes again. Grant us the spirit of charity to understand and give allowances to our differences and limitations, so that we may overcome them and not let them hinder the progress of our work. When we're done and frustration start to set in and we want to give up, may we take time to reflect our motiva motivations and find reasons to pers persevere and be cheerful again. Lord, at the end of the day, may we feel a sense of peace and happiness for the opportunity to work and to contribute to the building up of your kingdom here on earth. Amen. kamay at sumunod sa akin, paninumpa ng katapatan sa watawat. Ako ay Pilipino, 
buong patapatang nanunumpa sa watawat ng Pilipinas at sa pansa kanyang sinasagisa na may dangal, katarungan at kalayaan na pinatikilos ng sambay ng makajos, makatao, makakalikasan, at makabansa. Pakitaas ng kaya ng kumayat sa kunod sa ako. Manunong ko ng Code Bayan 2021. Ako ay isang Code Bayan. Pangangalagaan ko ang tiwalang ipinagkalawag ng mga mayan. Maglilingkod ako ng may malasakit, katapatan at kausayan na walang pinikilingan. Magiging mabuting halimbawa ako at magbibigay ng pag-asa at inspirasyon sa aking kapwa lingkod bayan. Lilinangin ko ang aking sariling kakayahan upang sa lahat ng panahon ay mapaglingkuran ko ng buong kahusayan ang sambayanan. Hindi ako makikibahagi sa mga katiwalian sa pamahalaan. Pipigilan at isisiwalat ko ito sa pamamagitan ng tama at angkop na pamamaraan. Isa sa buhay ko, ang isang likod bayang makajos, makatao, makakalikasan at makabansa. Tutugon ako sa mga hangon ng makabagong panahon tungo sa adikain ng matatag Maging hawa at panatag na buhay. Sa mga tungkulin at hangarin ito, kasi handawa ako ng may kapal.
Departemento na nandito, led by respective department heads, mas malakas na palakpak. Ang ating mga minamahal, ang mga members ng ating kapulisan, led by Police Lieutenant Colonel Jeremy Poblete, palakpakan natin. Isama na natin ang Bureau of Fire Protection, palakpakan natin sila. Lahat po na nandito ngayon, mga kawani ng ating uh, lokal na pamalaan, at iba pa na mga bisita na sa paligid natin, mga magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Alam niyo po, halos sa uh, buong buhay uh, natin, or ako in particular, mula na magkaisip, eh talagang lagi tayo merong Monday flag racing ceremony. Ako ay produkto ng public school elementary sa Tagkawayan, Quezon. High school, public school din. At doon sa college, eh public school pa rin kasi sa PMA. At after ako ako ay graduate 1987, for the rest of the 34 years, eh nasa Philippine Constabulary at Philippine National Police, na lagi tayong merong flag racing ceremony. Natandaan ko at kayo, ganoon din ang ating ginagawa. Natandaan ko nga po nung akong elementary pa eh, yung meron akong nalate ng gising at nahuli sa flag racing ceremony. Maraming riso ng palusot sa mga teacher natin. Pero alam na mga teacher natin kung tayo ay nagpapalusot at di naman tayo uh, sanay magsinungaling. Kaya you will, I will uh, end that up na mag-isang uh, nagpa-flag racing dun sa tapat ng ating uh, flagpole. Pero bago matapos yun at pagkatapos ay babanggitin at binanggit ng aking guro ang kahalagahan ng pag-attend ng flag racing ceremony. Una, to give respect to the time sa ating makasamahan doon sa flag racing ceremony. At pangalawa, to remind us to honor our flag and those who have sacrificed and died para sa ating bayan. Alam nyo, naalala ko, ah... Uh, Uh, ako po kasi, ang tatay ko ay isang guerrilla at war veteran sa Quezon. Kaya naalala ko yung mga kwento niya nung kanilang kaparahunan kung kaya siya rin nagsulong sa akin. Nag-inganyo actually na pumasok sa Philippine Military Academy. Kung kaya ko daw ba, eh nalusta, nakapasa at yun. The rest is history. Uh, but ngayon, we have just concluded another Monday flag racing uh, ceremony. And uh, sa pagkatong ito, we should be reminded, ano ba talagang ibig sabihin ng Philippine flag? It reminds us to, uh, of our commitment uh, bilang mga lingkod bayan, kagaya ng ating panunumpa kanina, na gawin ang lahat, the best of, uh, of us for the service to our countrymen. And it also, as a Filipino citizen, remind us na tayo ay maging, ka, ka, maging isang mamayan na ang hangarin ay baging mas maganda ang ating sambayanan na ating uh, kinamulatan at ating dapat na pinaglilingkuran. So, sa uh, less than three months from now, tayo po ay haharap muli sa isang napakalagang panahon kung saan mamimili tayo ng ating mga uh, kandidato. Alam po, napakarami na pagpipilian, both from the national and local uh, uh, positions, pero ang hinihiling natin, ito ang ating pagkakataon na obligation, hindi lamang sa ating sarili, kung hindi obligasyon para sa ating bayan, uh, para naman sa patuloy na pagkulad ng ating bayan. Sa araw po ito, ilapit sa aking pagpasalamat kay Mayor Sam sa imbitasyon na makahalubilo kayo kahit may klim panahon dito sa flag racing ceremony. At gaya na bagit ko, eh, eto ulit at uh, talagang uh, ang aking hangarin na tatlong buwan pagkatapos ko magretiro, eh, gusto ko ulit na lagi na gatid na Monday flag racing ceremony. At sana uh, magawa yun Uh, bilang isang halalabayan kung inyong pagtitiwalaan. Wala po akong pwede pagmalaki kung hindi ang aking 
halos apat na dekada na pagserbisyo kasama ang ating mga magigiting na membro ng ating kapulisan na pinilit na ipakita ang tunay na paglilingkod sa ating bayan. Kung ano po yung nakita nyo na aking ginawang paglilingkod kasama ang ating mga kapulisan, eh yung po yung ating kagawin. Iisipin ang kapakanan ng mas nakarami. Iisipin ang kapakanan na dapat paglilingkod sa bayan at hindi nag-aabuso o nagbabalabis sa katungkulan. So sa araw po ito ay eh, napagandang araw pa para sa ating lahat. At nandito po kayo, ako, hindi na ngayon bilang isang hepe or uh, retradong uh, uh, membro ng Philippine National Police kung hindi isang kandidato na humingi ng inyong suporta at uh, boto. At uh, sabi ko kay Mayor, eh, labindalawa naman po yung ating ibubotong senador. Eh, baka sakali naman na through the endorsement of our beloved Mayor na uh, kamag-anak, na aking classmate na si General Ono Daway, by the way, aking po palang asawa, ang kanyang nanay ay galing dito sa Binalonan, Pangasinan. So talagang uh, uh, hindi, kumbaga, hindi malayo sa atin at sa kapatid. Maraming kaibigan na nandito. Kaya ako'y naniniwala na sa inyong tulong at sa inyong pagtitiwala, ay, uh, iyon ay magiging instrumental para po sa aking patuloy na paglilingkod uh, sa ating bayan. Ako po si General Guillermo Ullasar, number 23 sa balota. So para madaling matandaan, eh, Michael Jordan daw, uh, di, di ba? Michael Jordan, number 23 sa Malota. At hayaan niyo po na uh, ang uh, aking paglilingkod, ang aking mag-inspirasyon ay ang mahabang pagsasamahan na ating ipinakita. At sisigapin at pipilitin, hindi ko kayo bibiguin sa inyong pagtitiwala na ibibigay sa akin. Yung po ba ay pwede kong mahingi sa inyong ating mga kabayan, di sabihin mali, sa ating mga kapulisan, palakpak na lang kayo. Ha? So, non-partisan. Pero, siyempre, iba ang may pinagsamahan. Di ba? Malakas sa palakpak ka mula sa ating kapulitan. At ayaan nyo sa, sa akin, siyempre, kayo ang napakalapit sa aking puso. Yun ang ating uh, gagawin ng paraan na mas lalo pa tayong gumaling sa ating paglilingkod sa bayan. Because at the end of the day, whatever we do, yun ay para sa kapakanan ng mas nakarami, lalo na ang mahirap natin mga kabayan. Muli, ito po si General Elnazar uh, na andito po ngayon, hinihingi ang inyong tulong. At hayaan niyo po na ang aking pagsisilbi sa gobyerno, yaan ang aking maging puhunan upang ipaglaban ko ang araw-araw na laban niyo sa buhay dahil ang laban niyo ay laban ko. Maraming salamat po at magandang umaga sa atin. Good Pawis ang inalay ko sa bayan. Simula noong ako'y mamulang, subalit nakakalungkot na sa halip na may mga kakayahan ang mamuno sa bansa ay ang mga tiwali at bandarambong ang nangingibabaw. Kaya naman, bitbit ang pusong atleta, pagiging public servant at ang mga malalim kong karanasan ay tinanggap ko ang bagong hamon nito para sa bayan. Monsur del Rosario, handa maglingkod ng buong katapatan. Hi, gusto ko po magbigay ng mensahe sa autism community sa nangyari doon sa Dabao del Norte nung nagkampanya kami po doon uh, recently. Sa totoo lang po, hindi ko naintindihan yung mga sinasabi doon dahil hindi po ako Bisaya at hindi rin po ako Cebuano. Ilonggo po ako, Tagalog at English. So, ang salita doon, hindi ko masyadong maintindihan. Although, Uh, yung mga tao na tutuwa doon o kung ano man ang mga sinasabi doon kung hapalakpak uh, sinasabing pangalan ko tinuturo ako eh, nag-acknowledge ako dahil uh, barang nakikita ko yung mga tao na tutuwa so hindi ko po naintindihan yung mga uh, pananalita doon kasi hindi nga ako si Buano hindi rin ako Bisaya ilonggo po ako okay? uh, pagbalik ko sa Manila Uh, doon ko lang na-realize na uh, yung mga sinasabi doon. Pinadala sa akin ang video ng autism community at meron translation. At uh, sa totoo lang, uh, yung mga batang may autism, may ADHD, cerebral palsy, may Down syndrome, 
my learning disabilities, and kung anuman mga conditions, ay uh, malapit po ako sa kanila. Dahil sa tagal kong nagtuturo ng taekwondo, marami po akong mga batang tinuruan na may mga ganyan kondisyon. Uh, uh, malapit po sila sa puso ko, and uh, sa totoo lang, uh, bilib ako sa kanila. Kasi when I teach them, Uh, hindi sila nagigive up. Talagang may effort talaga sila na mag-aral ng taekwondo. And uh, hindi ko tinigil yan. Hanggang ngayon, years and years, tinuturoan ko yung mga batang ganyan. Marami po akong mga bata na nag naging black belt. Ha? Uh, yung iba, uh, nag-compete pa. And yung iba, uh, syempre, hindi kasing galing ng iba, uh, umabot ng red belt, blue belt, pero makikita mo, nag enjoy yung mga bata. Kaya nga, ginawa ko yung platform ko yung number two platform ko, yung uh, children with autism and learning disability uh, above sa mga platform ko ng mga at atleta. And uh, ang gusto ko dun sa platforma ko na gawin para sa mga kabataan, mga itong inosenteng kabataan na have no access to developmental pediatricians, uh, I want to give them access to developmental pediatricians. I want them to have uh, regional institutions, uh, regional schools, to help them, to educate them, because nakakalungkot na itong mga bata na to, they're born like this, and then they live their life like this, and then they die like that, and government has no intervention. I want to give them government intervention. Nobody cares about them. That's why this platform I'm doing is really for them. Now, Uh, with uh, this access for better pediatricians, this access for uh, regional schools might probably help them to become productive citizens of our country. You know, uh, rest assured that uh, I will fight for these uh, children, I will fight for these innocent kids, and uh, I do not condone uh, discrimination. I'm really against that. And that's what I stand for. Ayoko yung mga inaape, inililiit, ha? Uh, Uh, kaya ako, uh, tingin ko, uh, hindi tama ang mga ganyan na panlalait sa mga ganyan mga kabataan natin na wala namang kasalanan na pinanganak silang ganyan. So, I just like to end my uh, message uh, to all of you that uh, rest assured that I will make sure that I will stand up for the rights of these uh, kids, these innocent kids. Thank you. Ah, magandang gabi po sa inyo lahat. Tanggalin ko lang tong mask ko para makita niyo na ako talaga to. Baka sabihin niyo double, hindi hindi ako. Okay? Kumusta kayo diyan sa kanan? Okay lang kayo diyan? Dito sa gitna, doon sa likod. Dito sa kaliwa. Ayos, buhay pa kayo. Huwag kayong magalala, hindi ako magsalita ng matagal. Unang-una, gusto ko magpasalamat sa kay Senator Ping Lacson, kay Senate President Tito Soto, kay Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez na nagtiwala sa akin at sinama ako sa senatorial slate nila dahil nakikita nila may katapatan tayo, may katapangan at may kakayahan. Ngayon, hindi ko na masyado ikwento yung buhay ko kasi sa ibang panahon na lang. Ang gusto kong sabihin sa inyo, yung pagsisilbi ko nag-umpisa sa, sa Makati 2007 hanggang 2019. Naging konsihal po tayo at naging congressman. Nung ako'y congressman, ang boss ko nun, si Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez. Siya po yung Speaker of the House namin. Nakagawa po tayo ng 292 bills at nakapasa ng telecommuting act o work from home law. Yung work from home law, yun ang batas na bumubuhay sa Pilipino ngayon sa panahon ng pandemya. Dalawang taon, hindi sila makatrabaho sa labas. Itong batas na nagawa ko. Dahil dyan, nakakapagtrabaho ang Pilipino ha? at nabubuhay at napapakain ang kanilang pamilya at para maakaahon sa pandemya. Ngayon, pag tayo po ay naging senador sa awan ng Diyos at sa tulong ninyo, depende kung anong mangyayari, 
Marami po tayong plano. May plataforma tayo sa healthcare workers, sa healthcare system. Ang tinatawag ko dyan, Healthcare Heroes Card. Pero hindi ko na po i-explain lahat yan. Meron akong plano sa agriculture. Dahil baka hindi ninyo alam, probinsyano po ako, lumaki ako sa ako, Negros Occidental. Ha? Ewan ko lang kung may mga ilunggo, di ka pamati, pero ilunggo ko. Ha? Dito ko nagdako, diri lang ko nagtinigulang. Okay? So, may plano rin po tayo sa uh, mga batang may autism, Down syndrome, special kids. At may, pala, may plano rin po tayo, hindi ko maiwanan ng mga atleta. Naging public servant ako, naging action star, pero yung puso ko, atleta. Dahil alam naman ninyo, ako ang unang naging Pilipino taekwondo fighter sa Olympics at nalagay sa Hall of Fame sa Korea ng 2017. Kaya hindi ko papayaan ang mga atleta. Ngayon, may isang maikli akong mensahe sa inyo. Ito, eleksyon, nagumpisa na. Mag-isip kayo mabuti kung sinong pipiliin yung leader sa bansa natin. Presidente, Vice President, Senator, lahat hanggang sa konsyal. Dahil pag nagkamali tayo ng pili, sa dami ng problema ng Pilipinas, lubog na tayo. Ngayon, hindi ko pinipilit sa inyo ang mga kasama ko. Pero ako, Monsur del Rosario, ang presidente ko, Si Ping Lakson! Ang Vice Presidente ko, si Tito Soto! At bago ko matapos, number 19 sa balota. Maglilingkod sa inyong tapat na walang korupsyon. Dahil kung meron, hindi ako kukunin ni Ping Lakson. Maraming salamat! Magandang gabi! Cavite! Dito ako ngayon sa Lipa City Hall. Uh, gusto ko magpasalamat. Uh, Siyempre nagpasalamat na ako kay Ate B, kay Congresswoman uh, Bilma Santos at kay Senator Ralf Recto. Pero ito kasama ko ngayon si Mayor uh, Eric Africa. At uh, Mayor, maraming salamat. At na-accommodate ka ako. Tinanggal ko lang to para maintindihan niyo ako. Andito rin yung mga staff niya. So... Anyway, palabas mo to sa February 8. Baka ba awal pa sabihin to, pero tatakbo ulit si Mayor Africa. So, kasi Eric, so ito na yung Mayor ha, dito sa Batangas City. Okay? Ha? Okay, siya na. Dahil ako, kakagrain niya rin ako, di ba? <laughs> Ayos. Okay. Okay. Dalaga pa yan. Ay, Tatay Greg. Pero hindi kita tatawagin tatay dahil pareho lang edad natin. Pero sabi ng anak mo si Mea, birthday mo. At uh, die hard fans daw kita. At mahilig ka sa karate, martial arts, taekwondo, kung kudu, kung boxing, iskrima lahat. Very good. Siguro pareho tayong idol si Bruce Lee. Anyway, happy happy birthday Greg. Sana mag-enjoy ka sa birthday celebration mo. Ingat ka sa COVID. At uh, enjoy your birthday with your family and friends. And uh, I hope you will have many more birthdays to come in the future. And maybe one day I'll get to meet you in person. Alright? Take care and happy birthday again, Greg. Sa pamaraan, kabutihan, katahikan at kapatid
Babalikatin nila upang mapaglingkuran kayo ng buong katapatan. Ito lamang po ang kilusan na hindi nagdadala ng poot, hindi nagdadala ng galit. Walang paninira, walang panlilinlang, walang pagkakampi-kampi. Bakit po? Talagang kailangan natin ang magkaisa. Walang puwang dito ang pagkakampi-kampi o pagkakabahabahagi. Mabigat po ang dadaanan ng ating bansa. Hindi po kagaya ng nung isang araw sa proclamation rally sa Philippine Arena. Ako po ay ipinakilala ni Tony Gonzaga bilang kasama ng unity. Bakit naman po kinakailangan aglahiin si Tony Gonzaga dahil ako'y ipinakilala lama. Kasama naman po ako talaga ng unity. Ito po yung sinasabi namin. Napakababaw naman po na panggalingan ng hindi pagkakaunawaan dahil ba ako'y ipinakilala ni Tony Gonzaga na dating Naglingkod sa ABS-CBN, gano'n na po ba yun? Yun po ba ang kailangan natin? Hindi po. Kailangan natin ang pag-uunawaan 
ang pagmamalasakit sa bawat isa. Ito lamang po ang paraan para maibangon natin ang ating bansa. Isinara ko po ba ang ABS-7? Hindi po. Ang dami po nilang pagkakasala. Ang kanilang prangkisa ay free to air. Ano bang ibig sabihin nun? Ang palabas sa kanilang mga programa ay libre na panunod ng ating mga kababayan. Walang black boxes na babayaran. Ito po yung hindi nila ginalam. Natanggal daw po yung libo-libong mga empleyado. Paano naman po yung milyon-milyong Pilipino na pinagbayad nila ng black box? Mali po yun. Iti paglalaban natin yun. Ang prangkisa po nila ay one channel. Ano po ang ginawa ng ABS-CBN? Labing isang channel po ang ginamit nila. Nawala daw po ng trabaho yung kanilang mga kawani. Tama po yun. Kami rin po yung nalulungkot. Walang iniwan po sa isang chopper na nagpilit ng mga masada, mali pala yung linya ng kanyang prangkisa, sinitas siya ng polis, na abala yung mga pasayero. Sino po bang may kasalanan? Sino po ang dapat sisihin? Yung polis o yung chopper? Kami po yung sumita kasi po kailangan dahil may pagkakamali. Meron naman pong ibang grupo ayaw po makipag-debate ni BBM. Kaya po niyang pumunta sa mga interview. Ano po sabi nila? Ay, si ganito, ganito, ganito. ganito. Pero yung, yung tagapagsalita, eh puro kayo unity, puro kayo unity, puro kayo unity. Bakit po? Minamaliit po ba ang pagkakaisa ng isang bansa? Dito po nagmumula ang pag-uunawaan. Dito po magmumula ang pagdadangayan. Bakit mo mamaliitin ang pagkakaisa ng isang bansa? Ang bansang Singapore, napakaliit po. Kasing laki lang ng Metro Manila. Ngunit dahil sa kanilang pagkakaisa, nasaan sila ngayon? Sila ang pinaka-develop na bansa dito sa Asia. Kahit ganun lang sila kaliit. Nagahamong pa sila ng debate. Akala mo naman kung ang gagaling nila sa debate, Chairman. Akala mo naman kung kahit nilang ipanalo lahat ng mga usapin sa bansang ito. Ang dami po natin dapat gawin. Ano po ang sinasabi ng batas? Ang kuryente po ay dapat nating ibigay sa ating mga kababayan sa abot kayang halaga. Sino po bang makapagsasabi sa inyo na ang kuryente ay abot kaya natin. Taas po ang kamay. Kailangan po natin ibaba sapagkat ito ang layunin ng batas. Bakit po sumadsad ang ating public education? Merong kapabayaan. Pati po yung mga self-learning modules, hindi po ginawa ng Department of Education. Ang mga teachers po ang pinaggawa nila ng modules. Pumili ng modules, pumili ng computers at lahat hindi na ibigay sa mga estudyante natin. Ito po ay recorded ng Commission on Audit. Napakalawak po ng ating taniman ng paggain ng Pilipino. Hanggang ngayon, mahirap po ang mga magsasaka. Bakit po? Eh, hindi naman po nagagamit yung National Food Authority. Dapat ito po ang bumibili ng palay sapagkat dito lamang makalalaban, magiging competitive ang ating magsasaka. Ang bumibili po ang mga traders, kawawa po ang magsasaka. Walang subsidy. Hindi po natutupad yung sinasabi ng mga batas na kailangan subsidize sa mga farmers natin para maging competitive sila. Napakalawak po ng ating karagatan. Milyong hektarya ng karagatan ang Pilipinas. Hindi naman po tayo Bhutan, hindi tayo Tibet, hindi tayo Nepal, hindi tayo Afghanistan na landlock, hindi po. Tayo po ay napaliligiran ng karagatan. Bakit tayo mag-iimporto ng isda? 
Ito po ay insulto sa katililuhan ng ating mga kababayan. Hindi po po pwede. Halos marami pong madalong po o higit pa na bagyo ang dumadagsa sa ating dalampasiga. Palaging ganun, kailangan nating mapatatag ang estruktura ng ating mga komunidad katulad po ng bansang Cuba. Alam po ba niyo ang bansang Cuba kasing laki lamang ng Pilipinas? Ngunit dahil sa kanilang paghahanda, kahit anong bagyo, hindi lang bagyo ang dumaraan sa kanila. Ang tawag pa nga po ay hurricane. Walang namamatay na isang mamamayan nila kahit anong bagyo o hurricane ang dumating sa kanila. Bakit po? Sapagat napaghandaan nila ang mga unos ng buhay na dumadating sa kanila. Ngunit, kagaya po ng sinabi ng aking mga kasama, na gusto kong pagtulong-tulungan din natin, hindi lamang naman po ang Pangulo ng Pilipinas, Bongbong Marcos, o pangalawang Pangulo, Sara Duterte, at ang mga kasama niyang senador na ngayon ay nandito. Kailangan po tumulong din kayo. Paano nyo kami tutulungan? Pakikiusap po kami. Ang bawat isa sa amin nandito ngayon na mga senador, kilala naman po ninyo silang lahat. Itawid po ninyo kami sa senado. Kaming lahat ay magtutulong-tulong para sa inyo. Parang layunin ng pagkakaisa ay ating magawa. Ang number ko po sa balota, mga kababayan, ay 43. Mahal ko po kayong lahat. Ang pangalan ko po ay Rodante Marcolenta. Hindi si Kaka. Ngunit maglilingkod ng tapat. Maraming salamat! Maraming maraming salamat po! Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat, mga kababayan taga Quezon City. Gusto ko munang magpugay sa aking mga kaibigan at ating mga kapanaling sa lugar na ito. Muna-muna na po sa aking matalik na kaibigan ang susunod na punong ng sud. Mayor ng Quezon City, Mike Defensor. Ang susunod po, na busy, Mayor ng Quezon City, ay bigong ka rin po, Willie Castello. Sa lahat po, ng mga congressional candidates po, ng malayang Quezon City, at sa lahat po, ng tumatakbong mga konsihal ng sudat, mga kaibigan po natin silang lahat. Mga kaibigan, ang unit po ay isang kilusan na nagihikayat sa ating lahat ang tunay at ganap na pagkakaisa. Ito lamang po ang susi. Ito lamang po ang paraan para maibangon natin ang ating bayan, ang ating bansa, sapagat alam niyo naman, ito ay dumadanas sa isang napakatinding pagsubok. 
Wala pong ibang paraan. Wala pong ibang solusyon kung hindi ang tunay na pagkakaisa. Ito po ang layunin ng SARA, ng BBM SARA Unity. Wala pong ibang paraan. Kailangan po tayong magkaisa. Ang kilusan po ito ay hindi po dapat magtaglay ng puot sa ating dibdib. Walang paninira, walang pagkakampi-kampi, walang pagkakabahabahagi. Kailangan po lahat ang pagdadamayan bilang isang bansa, ang pagbibigayan, pag-uunawaan sa isa't isa, pagmamalasakit para ibangon natin ang ating bansa. Sana po ay iwasan na natin yung mga mababaw na politika. Halimbawa po, alam naman po ninyo yung nangyari na isang pagkakataon na ako po ay ipinakilala ng isang tanyan na host MC si Ms. Tony Gonzaga. Bakit kailangan po na aglahin si Tony Gonzaga dahil lamang ako ay pinakilala? Hindi po yan ang politika na kailangan natin. Hindi po yan ang layunin ng Bumbong Sara Unity. Meron naman po ang nagsasabi dahil si BBM Umiiwas niya, umiiwas na siya sa pagdidebate, umiiwas na sa mga interview, kung ano-ano po ang sinasabi ng mga kumakalaban. Ano po ang sabi nila? Kinakailangan makipagdebate siya para makilatis siya, para nalaman natin kung gaano siya katatag bilang isang leader ng bansa. Mga kababayan, hindi po ang debate ang sukatan ng isang leader. Sa totoo lang, alam naman po ito ni Mayor Devensor. Kung magsalita sila, ang alam mo naman, napakarunong nila sa debate. Ang alam mo naman, mananalo sila sa debate. BBM Sara, tapos na po ang eleksyon. Nilaban pa pa sila, BBM Sara, wala na po. Ano po ang pinag-uusapan natin? Yung mga tao na tutulong sa kanila. Sapagkat kahit sila'y manuklok ng Pangulo at pangalawang Pangulo ng bansa ito, Kapag ka ang mga nanalong senador ay hindi nila katampi, hindi rin tayo magtatakumpay. Kailangan po ninyong itawin ang kanilang mga piniling kandidato sa Senado upang tulungan silang dalawa sa pagmamalasakit sa isang maselan na layunin na paglingkuran ng bansa ng buong katapatan. Napakarangin po natin isip, mga kababayan. Ang kuryente po sa bansang ito ay napakataas ang singil. Maling-mali po yan sapagat ang unang layunin ng batas, ibigay ang kuryente sa mga mamamayan sa abot kayang halaga. Letra po, letra na kasulat po yan sa batas. Pangunahing layunin ng batas. Ngunit, wala ninyong saan ang tumingin dito sa isyo nito. Talaga mo po, ang monthly billing ng Meralgo. Alam po ba ninyo, nakalagay dito, pati ang mga ninakaw na kuryente, kayo, ako, si Mayor, 
Defensor Vice Mayor Vinny Castello ang magbabayad kapag ninakaw ang mga kuryente. Tama po ba yun? Yung local franchise ng Miral po nakasulat po dito. Kayo rin ang magbabayad. Anong kinalaman ninyo sa local franchise tax ng Miral? Marami pa po ang nakalagay sa batas kung paano natin may bababa ang presyo ng kuryente. Kailangan po natin itaas ang kalidad ng public education. Bakit po? Sumadsag po ang kalidad ng ating mga mag-aaral na kabataan kung pag-uusapan ay yung tatlong sunod-sunod na international assessment. Kulelak po ang ating bansa. Hindi po natin papayagan yan sapagkat ang ating mga anak ang puhunan ng bansa nito kung hindi po maganda ang kalidad ng edukasyon, saan po pupunta ang ating bansa? Pagtulungan po natin yan, ayusin po natin yan. Mauuna na po yung mga ating mga guru. Sapagkat hindi po nasusunod yung tinatawag na Magna Carta for the Public School Teachers. Limampot-anim na taon na ang nakararaan. Ngunit ang mga guru, ang kanilang kalagayan, Mahirap pa rin at kawawa. Mga kababayan ng ating bansa ay mayaman ang kalupaan. Marami tayong mapagtatamnan ng ating pagkain. Bakit na nanatili pong mahirap, kawawa ang magsasaka sa bansa nito? Sapagkat hindi na ipatusubad ng mabuti ang mga batas na ginawa natin para sa kanila. Isa pa po, Halos dalawang pong bagyo po ang dumarating sa ating bansa taon-taon. Kailangan makapagtalaga po tayo ng isang matatag na pamayanan. Ihanda natin ang ating mamamayan kapag dumarating ang mga ganitong bagyo. Hindi po yung parang sari-sari store na lang. Kailangan merong ganap pamalagyan na matatag na mekanismo para tulungan ang mga mamamayan kapag ka dumarating ang ganitong kalamidad. Katulad po ng bansang Cuba. Ang bansang Cuba ay kasing laki po ng ating bansa. Nandun po sa kabilang planeta yon. Mas malakas po ang bagyong dumarating sa kanila. Ang tawag sa kanila ay hurricane. Ngunit, dahil sa kahandaan nila, walang isang mamamayan nila ang nasasawi. Kahit isa wala. Bakit po? Dahil nakahanda po sila sa bawat unos ng buhay na darating sa kanilang bansa. Ito pa po ang problema. Kailangan pong pagtulong-tulungan natin kung paano natin masasawara ang korupsyon sa ating bansa. Ito po ay matagal ng problema ng bansa nito. Kahit sino pa po ang pamulo ang maluklok sa ating gobyerno kapag hindi tayo tumulong, may hirapan po tayong bumangon bilang isang bansa. Ano pong gagawin natin? Sasabihin po natin sa COA, Commission on Audit, palitan natin, baligtarin natin ang ginagawa ninyo. Ang trabaho ninyo ay trabaho tulog. Trabaho tamad. Bakit po? Hindi po pagbabantay ng pera ng bayan ang ginagawa. Ang ginagawa nila, magre-report lang sila pagkatapos ng isang taon. Halimbawa po sa Quezon City, meron pong resident auditor ng Quezon City. Ang dapat pong gawin, nakikita mo pa lang, naamoy mo pa lang yung anumalya na lumalabas, pigilin mo na. Pigilin mo na. Yun ang trabaho ng security guard. Nakakita ka ba ng security guard na tutulog-tulog, hindi po niya trabaho yun. Pagdating ba ng ginapukasan sa kanya ibibigay na yun, napaganda po ng ulat po sa'yo. Narito po lahat ang ninakaw sa Quezon City na kalista po. Magmula po sa mga truck pinakamalaking kasangkapan ng syudad hanggang sa pinakamaliit na pahong bakyatan dito po tanggapin mo ang aking ulat.
Neil. Matutuwa ba si Neil Mike Devensor? Kahit napakaganda ng ulat na binigay mo sa kanya. Hindi niya ikatutuwa yun. Manulungkot ang mayor ninyo. Bakit? Ninakaw ang pera ng Quezon City. Ano po ang dapat natin gawin? Babalik ka rin po natin yun. Kasabihin natin sa kanila, eto ang nakasulat sa batas ng Commission on Audit. Kailangan nandun ka sa umpisa, nandun ka sa una, para mapigilan mo anuman ang dapat mo wala. Hindi, ganun po yung dapat na trabaho. Pasensya na po kayo kung may sana. Medyo tumataas po yung aking emosyon. Pero nang dahil po kasi yun, sa pagmamahal po sa ating bayan. At kailangan po natin maglilingkod ay tapat. 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 Mga kababayan, mas marami po ang nakasuot ng pula sa araw na ito. Ang araw na ito ay tinatawag na Valentine's Day. Para pong nagtataon at pinigtiyak ng pagkakataon. Ang numero ko po sa balota ay 43. 43. Parang ganito po. Ano po yung bilang ko? Ano po yung bilang? Mahina po. Ano po? Ako po. Si Dante Marcoleta, hindi sika, ngunit maglilingkod ng tapat. I love you all! Salamat, Quezon City! Napakarami po nating issue, mga kababayan. Ang kuryente po sa bansang ito ay napakataas ang singil. Maling-mali po yan sapagat ang unang layunin ng batas, ibigay ang kuryente sa mga mamamayan sa abot kayang halaga. Letra por letra nakasulat po yan sa batas. Pangunahing layunin ng batas. Ngunit, wala ni minsan man ang tumingin dito sa isyong ito. Daladala ko po ang monthly billing ng Meralgo. Alam po ba ninyo, nakalagay dito, pati ang mga ninakaw na kuryente, kayo, ako, si Mayor, Defensor, Vice Mayor, Winnie Castello ang magbabayad kapag ninakaw ang mga kuryente. Tama po ba yun? Yung local franchise ng Miralco nakasulat po dito, kayo rin ang magbabayad. Anong kinalaman ninyo sa local franchise tax ng Miralco? Marami pa po ang nakalagay sa batas kung paano natin may bababa ang presyo ng kuryente. Mga milenyo, pagod ka na ba galing sa trabaho? At gutom na sa maghabong pagtatrabaho, pero wala kang pagkain sa bahay. Narito na ang sagot mga katropa, ang Superman of Lichon na papawi sa inyong gutom at siguradong mapapaanerize ka. 
dahil sa tender juicy na jam mo pa. At siguradong malinis at bagong katay buwat sa farm. Kaya super masalasa at pang masa pa. Ano pa hinihintay ng mga katropa? Takbo na sa super manok pandenyo siniluan at bumili na baka maabusan ka katropa. Nagbabasa ka pa ba ng dyaryo? O nakikinig ka pa ba ng radyo? Kung ngayon, Wachang ay mapapakinggan nila sa inyong mga selto. Dahil online na tayo, mga kamilenyo. Kaya manood, makinig dito sa Millennial Online TV. Rider, sumalpok sa Kaya poste ng i-follow, like, subscribe, at i-share na mga katropa. Mga balita at pangyayang magalap sa buong magdamag. Ihimayin, tatalakayin, ibabalita, ngayon na. Dito lang sa Millennial Online TV News Rica. Mga millennials, marunong na ba kayong magluto ng mga masasarap at swak sa budget ng mga pagkain? Abay, huwag puro lang kayo AXI at ML at puro pagkakalikot lang ng cellphone. Dapat marunong ka rin sa gawaing bahay at tulungan ang inyong mga mamsi. Kaya tara na, samahan natin ang kusinera ng bagong milenyo, si Ate J. At tuturuan tayong magluto ng mga masasarap na ulam para sa ating mga hapagkainan at swak pa sa budget. Ika nga, a delicious food on a proper price. Tara na, mga katropa! I-type lang sa inyong mga cellphone, sa inyong mga Facebook at YouTube, ang Millennial Online TV. Be lighting, be lakas, ang bagong news online TV. Nang bagong milenyo Millennial Online TV Ang katropa mo Sa pagbabalita Mga katropa Ako po si Randel Villados Ang online narangis na Nang bagong milenyo ng Millennial Online TV na nagaanyaya sa inyo na makikanta, makisaya at tumutok sa lahat ng programa ng Millennial Online TV. I-type lamang sa inyong Facebook at YouTube ang Millennial Online TV. Nood na mga katropa! Ako inyong lingkod, Rosel Lopez, ang inyong katropa, ang inyong kabarangay dito sa Millennial Online TV. Abangan! ang ating mga kaganapan dito sa ating bansa at abangan din ang panunungkol ni Kapitan sa ating dalaw barangay. Paano nyo kami mapapanood? I-type lamang sa inyong mga cellphone, sa inyong Facebook at YouTube, ang Millennial Online TV. Ano pa hinihintay nyo mga katropa? Like, subscribe, at share na. Okay mga katropa? Mga katropa, ako po si Gazi Sarip, ang inyong tagapaghatid ng balita sa bagong milenyo na nag-aanyaya sa inyo na tunghaya ng aking mga pag-uulat at tumutok sa lahat ng programa dito sa Millennial Online TV. Itype lamang sa inyong Facebook at YouTube ang Millennial Online TV. Nood na mga katropa! Be lighting! Be lakas! Ang bagong news online TV ng bagong milenyo. Millennial Online TV Ang katropa mo sa pagbabalita
Now, uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, we are, uh, what's the biggest destruction of dangerous drugs worth one point? Rebisahin, opinion, malawakin, aksyonan. Kasama si Rosel Lopez, ang inyong katropa sa pagbabalita. Dito lang sa Millennial Online TV. Tutok na mga katropa! Millennial Online TV News Update Arestado ang apat na individual sa loob ng hinihinalang drug den at nakuhaan ng humigit kumulang 102,000 halaga ng shabu kasunod ng entrapment operation na inunisad ng mga ahente ng PDEA, Sambales at Sambales Police noong biyernes ng gabi, Pebrero 19. Batay sa report ng PIDEA Sambales kay PIDEA Director General Wilkins M. Villanueva, kinilala ng mga otoridad ang mga naarestong sospek na sina Bergirio Paner I. Nazareno, 58 anyos, binata, residente ng Puroktres, Barangay Matain, Subic, Sambales, Arvin Paner I. Nazareno, 52 anyos, may asawa, presidente ng Barangay Matain, Subic, Sambales, Richard Delosa I. Pampanga, 38 anyos, binata, presidente ng Northern Street, New Palalaki, Olongapo City, at Christian Gracel Roseta I. Pasamonte, 33 anyos, binata, presidente ng Apable Street, Barangay Asinong Poblasyon, Subig, Sambales. Nakuha sa operasyon ang limang heat seal transparent plastic sachet na naglalaman ng 15 gramo ng shabu na nagkakahalaga ng 102,000 sari-saring mga gamit sa droga at ang baibas money sa sampahan ng kasong paglabag sa Comprehensive Dangerous Drug Act of 2002 ang mga naarestong sospek. Mula sa Sambales, Jim Payak para sa Millennial Online TV Ang katropa mo sa pagbabalita Millennial Online TV News Update Narito ang Millennial Online TV News Update Lubos ang tuwa at pasasalamat ng mga Zumba Ladies ng Johnsonville sa Barangay San Juan sa bayan ng Kaintalalawigan ng Rizal. Ito'y dahil sa support ang binibigay sa kanila ni Nakainta Rizal Mayor Kit Nieto at may bahay niyang si Atty. Ellen Nieto. Ayon sa mga Zumba Ladies ng Johnsonville, ito'y sa kabila ng dumaang pandemya ay hindi anya naputol ang suporta sa kanila na ang kanilang alkalde sa kanilang mga kababaihan. Kahit pa ng mga Sumba ladies, hindi lang ang kanilang mga kababaihan ng Jacksonville Bagkus ay lahat ng mga barangay sa Bayan ng Kainta ay suportado ni Mayor Kit Nieto at ng may bahay nito. At dahil dito, tauspuso naman ang pasasalamat ng mga kababaihan ng Jacksonville sa nasabing barangay na lawigan ng Rizal kay Mayor Kit Nieto. Magandang magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat, lalo na po sa aming butihing mayor. Atorni Nieto at gayon din po sa kanyang may bahay Atorni Ellen Nieto uh, andito po kami ngayon sa OFCG ng uh, Kainta kami po ang bumubuo dito po sa Jansenville uh, nagsimula po kami since hanggang ngayon po ay 15 years ago at tagal na po pala so, uh, simula po ito is uh, aerobic pa ang tawag Mm, uh, oh. Ang aming pong uh, founder ay si Kapitan Naomi Kelly. Ay. Ang wala din po silang sawa sa pagtulong, pagtulong sa amin, lalo na po sa pagsuporta sa mga aming pangangailangan. Oh. Lalo po din ang aming sound system, ang uh, aming mga uniform, at ang iba po ay ang mga financial ay uh, aming po pinasasalamatan lahat. Talaga, sinusuport lahat po ni Peyan ang zumba ng lahat ng barangay ng Kaisa. Talaga, wala kang masasabi na walang 
Sumba sa bawat barangay na kay Tay. Lahat po yan binibigyan ni Mayor ng eh. At yun. Sa oh, yes. 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 At siyempre, Eh, ibig sabihin hindi hindi totoo yung mga fake news yun ano? Fake news, fake news po. Marami. Rosel Lopez para sa Millennial Online TV ang katropa mo sa pagbabalita. To talk to us, to talk to us about uh, how is the recovery of the Philippine economy uh, and also prospects for the future. Uh, also, the topic of uh, elections and the uh, Philippine economy. Uh, and also headlines of the newspapers today, uh, several newspapers headline today is uh, NCR, National Capital Region, mayors are going to meet and discuss possibility of alert level one. And people are asking also, are we ready to totally exit the pandemic? We have with us today three panelists, three people who will speak to us. Uh, first is Secretary Joy Concepcion, he will join us in a few minutes, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, he is now based in the US. Uh, he's on a trip to the US. Uh, next to speak is Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, PCCI newly elected president, uh, Mr. George Barcelon. And uh, next is Federation of Filipino Chinese Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Inc., FFCCCII president, Dr. Henry Lim Bon Leon. Uh, we will invite, we will invite everyone to give their opening statement, assess the Philippine economy and how they view the future. Um, I, I'd like to call Mr. George Barcelon, uh, President of Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, PCCI, to give his opening statement to be followed by Dr. Lim. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Wilson, for the introduction. Uh, good morning, uh, Senator Nikki Kositeng. Good morning, uh, my good friend Henry Nimunleong and the other uh, people from media. I see some members from our chamber also. Uh, good morning to all. Uh, well, uh, for a start, I can say that uh, things are going uh, towards more positive. Well, the positive that we'd like to hear. In other words, uh, the uh, infection rate has uh, really come down and tapered off. And uh, you, can, you can see that the economy is bouncing back. Uh, these uh, mayors or MMDA, I think they're reviewing uh, whether it's time for us to uh, lower down the alert level to one. Uh, uh, but uh, what we can see uh, last December, you know, when it comes to uh, December or Christmas, that eh, uh, sometimes we don't follow the protocol. And uh, I think uh, even without gov government lowering down the uh, protocol to alert level one, in some areas, I think we were practicing level one already. You can see more people going out. Uh, yes. The uh, protocols, of course, this uh, distancing has not been, uh, we're not been uh, strictly followed. But luckily for us, uh, January and February, uh, the numbers of COVID infection has uh, come down and uh, both in infection and both in morbidity. And uh, we're very positive uh, that uh, the, at least foreseeable, uh, the uh, economy uh, will be more, uh, um, will gain strength day by day. Uh, and we are, of course, we are cognizant of the fact that the COVID-19 is still around. Uh, we have to take all the precautions as uh, uh, we're guided by IATF. Uh, that's all for my opening statement. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, PCCI President George Barcelon. Uh, next, I'd like to invite uh, for opening statement, Dr. Henry Lin Bonleong. He is president of the Federation of Filipino Chinese 
Chambers of Commerce and Industry Inc., FFCCCII. Also, he is the lead convenor of the Filipino Chinese Community Calamity Fund, which has been doing a lot to help in this pandemic and also the typhoon and other calamities. Uh, Dr. Lim, welcome. welcome. Uh, thank you so much, Wilson. Thank you so much, Wilson. Uh, hi, George. Nice to see you around. Hi. Nice, nice to see you back at the helm of PCCI. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Maybe uh, we can work even closer together, uh, uh, PCCI and the Federation. Of course, uh, Wilson Flores, uh, the Pandesal Forum host, and also at the same time the chairman of our Federation Media and Public Information Committee. Uh, my also good friend, uh, Nikki Koseteng, uh, our friends in media, uh, ladies and gentlemen, best and good morning to all. It is really my great pleasure to join the Pandesal Forum on Philippine Economy Recovery and Exit from Pandemic. Last year, 2021, saw the start of our economic recovery with a full year GDP growth of 5.6%. Our country heard her and surmounted the Delta and Omicron surges well because of the base vaccines, massive testing, and the cooperation of fellow Filipinos in following the health protocols. Our federation growth forecast for the Philippines this year is from 6.5% to 7.5%. And we are on track to recovery due to good economic fundamentals, positive social economic reforms, sound fiscal policies, and also monetary policies and continues of our build, build, build infrastructure projects. Moreover, as ADB has pointed out, Asia is still remains a dynamic center of the global economy. And so we, we see that stability in economic integration, in trade and investment flows. RCEP, on the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, the world's biggest free trade zone between among the 10 members of ASEAN, including the Philippines, with Australia, China, Japan, South Korea, and the New Zealand, which starts this year, will be an additional boost to economic activity in the region. We are hoping that the Philippine Senate will ratify the answer soonest. Aside from this, the mainland election stimulus could add perhaps another 2% of GDP growth. And as in the previous years, election spending is in to lift the economy. Whoever wins the election, a successful, orderly, and credible election shall boost the Philippine social and economic and political stability and investors in consumer confidence. Thus, it will surely ignite faster and a very robust Philippine economic recovery. The decline of COVID-19 cases in the country, we recommend the continuous science-guided reopening of the Philippine economy. Continued vaccination program and booster dose. Continue to uphold the health protocols. Unite to focus on economic recovery, the creation of more jobs, assist our families for local employment, or help them regain lost jobs abroad. Assist the hard hit industries like tourism to provide more robust support for MSMEs and agriculture. Deepen reforms like lessening the bureaucratic red tape and enhance the ease of doing business and to implement globally competitive foreign investment policies. The pandemic should drive us to see how we can build better. Let's learn from the pandemic. The government has done a good job in addressing the pandemic, but there's, no, there's more to be done to strengthen public health nationwide. This includes establishing of more advanced healthcare system and facilities in every provinces, cities and municipalities so that the future COVID outbreak or health crisis will not affect our economic gains. We hope that our next elected leaders will consider this well and let's continue to support our leaders, our local businesses and take part in the work to build a stronger and more prosperous Philippines. Let's make this 2022 year of the water tiger, a period for making the Philippines into the tiger economy of ASEAN region. Again, thank you and 
bless and good morning to everybody. Thank you very much for our opening statement of Dr. Henry Lim Bon Leong, President FFCCCII. Also earlier, Mr. George Barcelon, President PCCI. There's a question here. The first question given to me uh, is from SMNI. Uh, would you like to ask your question, Jason? Uh, Mr. Jason uh, Rubrico of SMNI TV Network. Uh, would you like to ask your question or I'll just read your question? Can you unmute him or? Okay, but huh? you can raise your hand if you want to ask. I will read along the question of Jason Rubrico, SMNI. Ah. Nasa Zoom siya. Nasa Zoom siya. Ah, I will ask lang daw. I will ask. Sige. Um, sabi niya, uh, please kindly ask the two gentlemen if they are in favor po of putting National Capital Region under alert level one. Thank you. And then sabi pa niya, next question, what's the significance of the escalating to alert level one for our Philippine economy? Two questions. Are you in favor of plans to put NCR under level alert level one? And what significance of this de-escalation to our economy? Okay, who do you want? I can answer first, you want? Uh, Mr. Barcelona. Yeah. But uh, as I said earlier, all the indication shows that the uh, COVID-19 infection is uh, uh, tempering and uh, we are in favor of uh, lowering down the alert level. But uh, cognizant of the fact that the virus is still around. So what's important is the mobility side of it for the commuter. Because once we lower down to level one, there will be more people working. Okay? Not, and then the, uh, the retail, uh, retail establishment would be more patronized by people going to the malls or whatever. So uh, it entails uh, people commuting. And that's one factor that the government has to look into to make sure that there, there are enough uh, public transportations. Uh, we know very well during normal times, siksikan eh, mga jeepneys, mga buses. Yeah. And uh, having that in mind, uh, we do like the economy to be more open, but uh, safety factors uh, need to be installed no? uh, and, and how this is to be done. Uh, we don't, uh, our, our biggest fear is the modern surges, no? if the surges comes up again and then we'll be having the reset again, that would be very, very bad for the economy. Uh, the, any business you know very well is the supply chain. Uh, sometimes when they say lockdown, uh, you're only seeing the tip of the iceberg. Uh, the restaurants uh, locking down or manufacturing, you know, but the, uh, the supply chain is badly affected. Those supplying the uh, agri-products, services and the likes. Uh, so we hope that any uh, moving forward, uh, we're, we're taking uh, careful steps. Uh, so that, that's my comment on that. So I hope that uh, uh, government, uh, I'm sure government is uh, well aware of the fact that this is important. They are, they have, uh, they will put uh, forth the plans you know, on this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. George Marcelon, for that uh, answer. Uh, Dr. Henry Limpon-Yong of FCCCII. Are you in favor of alert level one? And how would it uh, affect the Philippine economy? Uh, well, soon. I think there yes. is no yes. businessman that will not uh, support alert level one. Uh, in fact, I think uh, without even doing anything, I think the government will uh, really uh, uh, lift on the alert level two already as early as. Uh, the end of February. By March, I think we should see a lead label one already. And uh, you know, this is uh, this is something that is uh, uh, very uh, even even, even uh, Secretary uh, Mon Lopez no? and even other cabinet members are really supporting a lead label one. And hopefully, the IATF will really look at this very carefully and uh, ask 
the level of uh, you know of uh, Omicron virus uh, has gone really down. Uh, we still have to be cautious, no? but uh, at least uh, not over cautious. No? I don't know that we will really affect our economy, but cautious enough no? uh, to contain the, the virus and to even lift up the economy. So I don't see there is any problem no? to uh, go to other level one. Thank you very much, Dr. Henry Limbon Leong of FFCCCII and Mr. Barcelon for uh, your answers. We'd like to next invite Mr. Rafi Ayeng of the Daily Tribune newspaper to ask your question. Mr. Rafi Ayeng. Yes, sir. Okay. Good morning. Po. Good morning. Welcome. Hi. Uh, sir, uh, this uh, question goes to Sir Barcelon and Mr. Henry Limbon Leong. Sir, there's, there's a looming threat from the European Parliament advising the European Commission to recall the GSP+, Plus, which would greatly affect the Philippine exports that enjoys free tariffs still due to issues of human rights violations. Yun po yung sinasabi ng European Commission. And the issue of Maria Reza and the incarceration of Senator Leila de Lima, among other issues po. For your take, sir, um, what should the, the government do in this looming threat? Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, Rafi, thank you for the questions. Um, I read the comment of uh, Secretary of Trade, uh, DTI, Trade and Commerce, uh, Secretary Roman Lopez, and I believe he eloquently answered uh, you know, the uh, uh, question as to there's no reason to take that uh, trade uh, privilege away from our country when uh, they're still talking about the same issue that in the past, I think uh, the numbers will show uh, that uh, uh, it has not, whether it's a reality or not, uh, it's questionable. Uh, the, uh, of course, this will affect our exports. Uh, there are about 6,500 items in the uh, 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 GPS Plus, uh, GS Plus. And, yes, uh, we are we are cognizant of that. I'm also I'm also chairman of the Philippine Exporters Confederation, and uh, mm -hmm. the, the issue that uh, that uh, at hand, uh, yes, there are six thousand plus items, but uh, not that many items uh, that we're exporting are under that umbrella. Uh, we hope that uh, that will not be uh, that will not push through. Uh, I had the privilege of talking to some of the European Chamber, and I have expressed to them. You know, our concern, but our uh, thoughts also that I hope that this is not a this is not being politicized. You know, this is an election year that we're heading, and uh, we feel that uh, if uh, all the clamoring for uh, suspension of this privilege was done two three years ago, why do it now? Yes, sir. So this is, uh, but we still uh, uh, we respect their decision. And uh, we stand by by the comments of our Secretary Ramon Lopez on this matter. Thank you. Sir, follow, follow up, sir. Yes. Uh, sinabi rin po ni Secretary Lopez na parang there's something, there's some kind of bullying na, na, na nangyayari. Do you support him on that? Uh, uh, well, yes. I, I, I didn't read that specific word uh, bullying, no? Uh, but earlier, my statement was referring to the fact that this has been... Uh, in their plates uh, ever since the beginning of the administration. And uh, two, three years ago, again, they have uh, uh, readdressed the issue and threatened us with the lifting of this privilege. And uh, maybe that's how uh, Secretary uh, Lopez looked at it. Uh, parang, parang bullying na eh. Yung ilan beses na pinag-usapan, uh, yes, we have shown uh, that uh, we, we really do not follow we really do not fall under that category. Thank you, Mr. Barcelon. Uh, before we continue, I'd like to uh, welcome Secretary Joey Concepcion. Uh, he is, of course, everybody knows, he is the presidential advisor on entrepreneurship uh, and also the very well-known founder of Go Negocio NGO. Uh, let us welcome Secretary Concepcion for your opening statement about the Philippine economy. 
how do you foresee our future, the situation now? And then we'll continue with the uh, question of Rafi Ayeng. Welcome, uh, Secretary Concepcion. Uh, hi, Wilson. Hi, hi Henry. Yes. Hi, George. Hi, Mike. Hi, George. Uh, good evening, good evening. Yeah, I think you're in the States. Yeah, my side is evening. Yes. Well, uh, quite frankly, I think uh, it's, it's very clear that uh, uh, the most dominant strain is Omicron, and I think that is a blessing that uh, uh, Omicron is a dominant strain, and I think uh, it will hold on for hopefully the entire year. Uh, between Delta and Omicron, Omicron is definitely the better variant that I think can push us towards an endemic state. No? Uh, we have been say, singing the same tune earlier on. No? When we locked down last year, that was the right thing to do to save the fourth quarter. But as I said, even last year, that will be the last lockdown. And true enough, we are going to see this as the last lockdown, what happened last year. Because basically the variant, Omicron, when you get sick and you're fully vaccinated, all you need to do is just stay home, get well, and then be able to leave the house. So that is how we see Omicron. No? And right now, all over the world, there seems to be no other variant that is a major threat. So uh, we have, uh, early, early this year, we have asked them also to bring down the quarantine levels to three days, and I'm glad that they went over and uh, even removed the entire quarantine, uh, which is a good sign. And uh, tourists will start coming in uh, I think in it's, it's open already to tourists, so that's that's another uh, big point. No, the tourism is going to really bounce back, and uh, I'm here in the states, and I've been sharing this with some of our friends and the media friends. That uh, uh, and I'm glad. No, Father Nick told me, you know, when you come here, you will see the difference, and and by and large, yes, there is a difference because the economy here is has been open. They continue to wear face masks. The vaccination cards are well implemented in restaurants. If you watch a basketball game, which I have a couple of times, uh, they're very strict with the vaccination cards. In fact, I have to explain that I'm from the Philippines. This is how our vaccine cards look like. You show a proper ID and you're allowed entry. Uh, and they're very strict. So uh, wearing a face mask yesterday has uh, been uh, moderated. In other words, for those who are uh, fully vaccinated, they have the option to take the mask off. No? I'm not saying that we should do that in the Philippines. I believe that uh, the mask should still be used, uh, at least from what I see, for at least the entire year, just to be able to ensure that uh, as we open up to alert level one, which I believe that it will be done on March, uh, then uh, we maintain the economy and you know not risk uh, us going back again to... Uh, um, this lockdown. So I think we're headed for um, very clearly for uh, opening up the economy to alert level one. I'm sure about that. Schools should be opened and back to normal, hopefully by June. Uh, capacities, I, I think we should uh, allow restaurants to dictate their own capacities right here. I've been to, you know, and when I was in the Manila for two years, I, I, I never ate in a restaurant. And uh, here I've been going out almost every night. And um, Everybody has their face mask and they take it off when they eat and, uh, I, and, and life is moving on. No? Yes, there are still infections, uh, but has started to come down as well. No? And uh, uh, as in the Philippines, uh, vaccination cards are also required. Here they're required. So you can see that there is greater mobility here in this country. Uh, there's a lot of confidence for people to go out. In our case, we have to bring that confidence back no? People are still scared. Um, and in reality, my wife, uh, she got COVID here, but it lasted only for five days. And nobody in our house got sick. Uh, it was totally mild. And she, and after five days, which is their quarantine uh, time now in the States, you can go out. No? So that's how I think life will be moving forward. No? It will be like an ordinary flu. You get sick, you stay home, you quarantine for five days, and then you leave your house after five days. And after that, no PCR test or any antigen is required after you get COVID. For as long as you just stay at home for five days, and everything is an honesty system. They call you uh, and check on you, and that's it. Just one call if you need any help. And after that, that's it. So 
that is how I believe the Philippines should move. Open, open up everything. Open up the casinos. Open up every business out there that remains closed. That is very important. We have a lot of catching up to do. I saw the note of uh, Secretary Dominguez that he plans to raise taxes to be able to pay for the debt. And that is correct. I've been saying that ever since before, our debt is going to balloon because of all of these efforts that we've been doing to save our people's lives. We have bought a lot of vaccines, testing equipments, and the list goes on. And that is not going to stop because booster shots will be needed on a regular basis. In America right now, they are already really emphasizing booster shots. You will not be able to enter a restaurant without a booster shot. No. So as they implement the booster shots, they are still keeping the, they, they still, they are already mandating uh, that you have to show your booster cards. No? When I said that uh, we have to implement booster cards in NCR, uh, people reacted to that. No? What I meant is we have to start planning to implement the booster cards the moment the time is up because we've clearly seen that these vaccines that we have will last only for about four months, whether it's Moderna, Pfizer, or Astra. It starts to win, and that's very clear. So that's why in, in the Philippines, we're giving it three to four months. In America, it's five months. No? So the vaccination program with the government and the private sector has to continue until such the time that we can clearly say that the pandemic is totally gone. No? But definitely, I'm very optimistic that uh, 2022 is going to be the year. And uh, this March, we move down to alert level one. All businesses hopefully open. Capacities for restaurants move up to 100%. And even for call centers and BPOs, we have to allow more uh, capacity in these uh, uh, call centers and BPOs because uh, they become more viable and they become more competitive as they, we compete in that market. No? Tourism is opening up. So, yes, uh, I am very bullish that uh, this coming year, will be a much better year. Thank you, Secretary Concepcion. There's a question here right now by Rafi <clears throat> Ayeng of Daily Tribune, answered recently by uh, Mr. Barcelon. Maybe you and Dr. Lim could reply. What is your reaction now to the EU, uh, the European Parliament, not the entire EU, European Parliament, uh, threatening Yata to take away Philippine duty-free privileges on our exports to the European Union uh, regarding controversial claims about human rights and uh, other issues. And uh, Secretary Mon Lopez complained about this. Uh, what are your reactions to this as business leaders? Uh... Are you asking uh, Joey or Pumuna? Uh, uh, both of you who would like to answer. Any go ahead. Joey. Uh, okay, okay, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead. Yes, anyway, yes. Uh, that's what yes. I said. No? Uh, of course, it will be a big blow for us now for uh, export to the European Union no? uh, to take out uh, the, uh, the, the, the privilege no? of the uh, duties and all of this. But you should know that uh, the export to the European Union is just one equation. Now out of the big, bigger and uh, bigger uh, uh, equation. Uh, I, I, I also agree, you know, I also agree that uh, with uh, Secretary Mon Lopez and the others, we are being bullied now at this time. The cases of Maria Risa and all of these things, but how come now it's only right now during election time that they are uh, coming out with all of these uh, threats and all these, these things. But I think, uh, as I said, no, uh, we are a sovereign country, so we should not allow other countries or other, even the European Union to meddle with our internal affairs. You know, I think we should stand by it. Uh, with the RCEP, with the others, so we can uh, bring back whatever you know, uh, losses to the European Union. And I, I, we are very sub resilient. And I think we also look at this very carefully. And uh, they, as, as we need to export to them, they also need our products also. So it's a two-way and it's a two-way affair, just like what happened uh, to Taiwan before, when they banned uh, our, our workers now because uh, there's some uh, 
but then regarding the fishing or whatever, no controversies, but one of the laws being shut and whatever. So, you know, when they threatened and uh, our you know, overseas Filipino workers who work in Taiwan, their losses is even bigger than ours because they cannot even export their products because they don't have enough workers. And the factories are complaining and they're crying already that uh, the government should allow more Filipinos to work in the factory. So it's a two-way affair, no? it's not only one way. I hope the European Union will look at that, that uh, uh, aspect now. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hendy Lim Bon Leong. Uh, Secretary Concepcion, would you like to comment on the question of Rafi Ayeng of Daily Tribune? Same question. Well, I, I, can you not? I, 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 I saw that. I glanced over that in the news, uh, uh, what uh, Mon Lopez said. I think uh, things will change. I think uh, I, I, that normally in the ASEAN, you always have that kind of issue. I mean, uh, when it comes to trade. But uh, I believe... Uh, as we elect a new leader, there will be a reset in relationships. No? And uh, I'm optimistic that uh, that issue can be resolved with the, this uh, election coming in, a new president, and I'm sure everybody will want to reset that relationship. Thank you very much. Uh, to Secretary Concepcion, Dr. Lim, and Mr. Barcelona. Rafi Ayeng has a follow-up question. He's from Daily Tribune. Rafi? Yes, sir. And this question goes to Sir Joey po. Sir yes. Joey, I understand that uh, with you saying na yung election season uh, may revitalize the economy due to poll spending. But hindi po ba nag-worry kayo sa influx and pagsisiksika ng mga tao na, sa mga sorties? Obviously, yung minimum health protocol hindi na po nasusunod. Hindi, ka, hindi kaya maging reason ito na kumalat na naman ng virus even if mild lang which may lead to another stricter alert level po. Well, you know, unfortunately, it's election time and uh, certain things you, you try to control, but uh, if the crowd is so big, then it becomes more difficult. No, uh, But if everybody follows the wearing of face mask, no, then you kind of mitigate that. I was in a coliseum with about 18,000 people and we were, there was no social distancing. We were seated beside each other, no? And uh, everybody complied with the face mask. So the chances of uh, infection is always there. But if you're fully vaccinated uh, and boosted, somehow if you do get sick, it will be mild. So I think we have to really learn to live with this whole situation. And with the election uh, really kicking off, and it will be more intense in the coming days and months, no? since uh, this is a very important election, uh, there is that risk, but uh, th th that's why we, we cannot let up in the whole booster program. In fact, NCR now, we have to boost our people in NCR. We're done with the first and second doses. The rest of the provinces who are not there yet, we have to bring up that vaccination rate to 70, even 80 no? percent to really be assured of a, another surge. No? But I, I'm, I'm, of course, the threat is there, but what can we do? No? I mean... It's very hard to control the crowd uh, when, uh, you know, I mean, uh, something like this is happening. So we, that is the risk that we take and we in the private sector will do our part. No? And that's why uh, it doesn't perturb us from opening up the economy because uh, keeping it close is just going to do more harm to more people. Thank you, Secretary Concepcion. Uh, Rafi, thank you uh, for your questions. Next, we'd like to invite Ms. Victoria Tulad of uh, GMA7 to ask her question. Ms. Victoria Tulad of GMA7, can we unmute her? Welcome. Hello, can you hear me, Pastor? Ah, yes, you're very clear. Papa. Good morning po yeah. to everyone. Uh, to all the panelists po, I was just wondering if we downgrade to alert level one, gaano po kalaki or how much will the economy improve in terms of percentage and when will we see the effect po? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tulad of GMA7. Um, may I answer that? Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Barcelona. I think uh, uh, 
based on the uh, pass uh, uh, restriction according to the level, you know, uh, during the level uh, three, uh, you can only accommodate indoor uh, 30%. Okay? And then with level two, uh, you can, uh, they're allowed to go as high as uh, 70%. And I think under level one, if you look at the numbers, I would believe that they would allow higher than 50% or maybe 70%. That alone on the numbers will tell you okay, uh, the, uh, the impact of lowering down the alert level. Uh, the exactly how many percent I cannot tell, but I would share with you anecdotally what happened between the third quarter and the fourth quarter. Okay, uh, we're in the fourth, third quarter when we had that lockdown, uh, really the necessary reset. You can see the quarter numbers really went down, but once entering the fourth quarter, you can see the quarter the GDP increase in the last quarter was 7.7%. So that alone will tell, will tell us that if we lower down the alert level, the GDP you can expect uh, maybe a few percentage point increase over the previous. So that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. George Barcelon. Uh, Dr. Lim, Secretary Concepcion, would you like to comment on Ms. Victoria Tulad's question? Can you go ahead? Yes, okay, okay. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you Joey. I mean, uh, every time, no, if you uh, keep people inside the house for so long a time, once you allow them to go out, no, then, uh, you know, uh, things will be very, very different. Uh, that's what I said. No. The reason why uh, George was saying that the last quarter of uh, last year, we have a jump of 7.6% growth in GDP. Then, uh, you know, federation being one of the biggest uh, Business uh, Federation of the countries with 170 different business organizations and the umbrellas. And we feel the pulses now. We discuss with each other about business and all these things. And we have also a group who, who is uh, in, the, in the chain of stores, you know, retail outlets, and all these things. And we are all very happy last December because uh, uh, we went to alert level two. So there were a lot of people going there to you know, uh, for shopping, you know. And, you know, after keeping them for so long, one of them is a uh, garment uh, company with us, uh, hundreds of uh, outlets over the Philippines. We're selling them, but before, uh, even during Christmas time, there are a lot of window shopping among the, you know, the shoppers. But right now, it's not only window shopping, it's really buying uh, not only one or two, but even three, you know, uh, garments. Siguro itong sila nakikita nila sa tagalan na sila naka, ano, nakapulong sa bahay. When they go out, they saw a lot of new styles of clothing, shoes, and all these things. So they will buy you know, only for two years. So keep them you know, up for two years. So they will even buy more. No? So, so these are the things that we are looking at. And I am happy also that for those who have not been going out to eat, uh, the, the, the last week now I was out twice already with my... Uh, with my daughters and my uh, grand grandchildren, and uh, we are happy, you know, that uh, the restaurants are already picking up. But of yes, course, you'll know this, you know. And uh, I hope if we go to uh, level one, then uh, we can see uh, more. Uh, so we are very, you know, we are very optimistic, and we are looking really for level one uh, beginning March, and that's why we have also predict. Uh, shown about around 6.5 to 7.5 percent for this year, and I think after the first quarter, the second, third, fourth quarter will uh, really kick on. And uh, so, so it's okay. The economy will be even higher. I see again the mentalaga the the universal forces of ano of itong equilibrium no will really play into us. I see once you lost them so tight for two years, suddenly you open up. Talagang, ano, talagang patalsik yun, ano. So this is what we are looking at. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Henry Lim Bonlyong, President FFCCCII. Secretary Joy Concepcion, would you like to yeah. add your comment? Yes. Yeah. So I, I think we have, really have no choice. You know, we have to grow the economy. If our debt to GDP will be 60% and above, no, that is a red flag. And if we want to maintain our investment grade rating, 
we will have to grow. There is no if or but. And uh, uh, unfortunately, the Philippines is not an America which has a lot of money. This, this, uh, we, we, what we can foresee right now is uh, Omicron uh, being mild. So cases are going down, but we still don't, are not 100% sure that there will be no new variant that will be coming in. As of now, from uh, the forecast and projections of Okta research, if this is Omicron, it is continuing to go, we will go down. But we always have to be prepared in case that happens. Now, we have to make use of this time while cases are down to really push the economy to move up. And that is why that the growth has to happen for us to be below the 60% debt to GDP, you know, which to me is when you're above that, it is a red flag. So that we will continue to maintain our investment grade rating, which is very important because it will allow us to borrow money at lower cost. If not, then uh, we will be paying a higher cost for this debt. So it will take a while for us to really pay down the debt if our economy will be sluggish. You know? And that is why we are really pushing that all sectors open up. It's about time that we open up. And, uh, and let's see, I believe that we still have a good chance of hitting an average of six and a half. You can see the last quarter when we opened up, it just bounced back to 7.7. No? So I think that can continue this year as we really push. And uh, I'm optimistic that IATF and the economic team realize that uh, problem. And even the new administration, uh, uh, BBM and Lenny, we, we've been updating them on uh, and giving some ideas to them because we want whoever wins in this election that uh, the current programs, the good programs of this administration be carried forward. No? There should not be a stagnant moment when the turnover happens. No? In other words, we more or less have to know what areas do we push? No? Are we going to continue buying vaccines? How are we gonna fund it? All of these things, that transition of, uh, from the new administration should not cause a slowdown because these initiatives have to continue for us to keep that economy open. Thank you, Secretary Concepcion. Uh, Ms. Victoria Tula, do you have a follow-up question related to your question? Uh, I... That's all, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Victoria Tulad of GMA7. Uh, Secretary, follow up lang to what you just said earlier. You mentioned uh, whoever wins, whether BBM or Lenny or Isco or Luxon. Um, do you think there will be a major change in the economic growth outlook if any on wins or do you see all of them following the good economic policies that we need. The reason I ask that, there were two foreign uh, think tanks that tried to comment about this. Uh, a UK-based think tank called Capital Economic Nagbabasa ka pa ba ng dyaryo? O nakikinig ka pa ba ng radyo? Kung ngayon, Wachang ay mapapakinggan nyo na sa inyong mga cellphone. Dahil online na tayo, mga kamilenyo. Kaya manood, makinig. Dito sa Millennial Online TV. Rider, sumalpok sa Kaya poste ng follow, like, subscribe, at ishare na mga katropa. Mga balita, 
at pangyayaring magalap sa buong magdamag. Hihimayin, tatalakayin, ibabalita, ngayon na, dito lang sa Millennial Online TV News Rika. Hindi naman nga na. Halos lahat. Policy, IDG. Ito yan sila. So, ito yung dalawang CIDG. Pinaiting, pinalakas, ang bagong news online TV ng bagong milenyo. Millennial Online TV. Ang katropa mo sa pagbabalita. Millennials, marunong na ba kayong magluto ng mga masasarap at swak sa budget ng mga pagkain? Abay, huwag puro lang kayo AXI at ML at puro pagkakalikot lang ng cellphone. Dapat marunong ka rin sa gawain bahay at tulungan ang inyong mga mamsi. Kaya tara na, samahan natin ang kusinera ng bagong milenyo, si Ate J. At tuturuan tayong magluto ng mga masasarap na ulam para sa ating mga hapagkainan at swak pa sa budget. Ika nga, a delicious food on a proper price. Tara na, mga katropa! Itype lang sa inyong mga cellphone, sa inyong mga Facebook at YouTube ang Millennial Online TV. Hanap mo ba ay Unwind Ventures? Tara nang mamangha sa mga tanawin. Ano ba ng yung travel rules? Dadalhin namin kayo. Unwind Ventures at saya. Dito lang sa wow biyahe. Kaya wow, di ba? Abangan, dito lang. Sa Millennial Online TV. Ikaw ba'y nag-iisa? Nanulungkot. Dahil iniwan at ipinagpalit. Niloko ng iyong minamahal. Kung ngayon, itype sa inyong mga cellphone, Facebook o YouTube man ang Millennial Online TV. Dahil nasa Millennial Online TV na ang online haralista ng bagong milenyo, si Randall Villados. At haharanahin kayo ni Randel ng iba't ibang awitin para maibsan ang iyong inip at kalungkutan ay nasaan man kayo. Hanggang sa tumanda. Tumanda. Pwede rin kayong makiduwit kay Randel 
Ang Sabado ng hapon, tutok na, tawag na mga milenyo. Araw-araw, ikaw ang gusto kong kasama, buhay ko'y kumpleto na, tuwing nandito ka, sa tabi ko o oh, aking giliw. Barangay, pangunahing ngunit ng pamahalang lokal, kung saan? Dito pinag-uusapan ang bawat sinalog ng mga residente ng bawat barangay. Dito rin pinag-uusapan ng mga piling hanggang na opisyal na barangay ang mga proyekto para sa kanilang barangay. Kumustahin natin ang panunungkulan ni Kapitan dito sa Dama Barangay sa Millennial Online TV Worldwide ang katropa ng bawat barangay. At may kinatapos sa mga mga Uh, pagpupulong. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagdalo at uh, tapos na po ang ating uh, session. Enjoy na po tayo. Now, uh, <clears throat> it's uh, career uh, for Talakay! The biggest destruction of dangerous drugs worth 1.7 million opinion malawakin Action na! Kasama si Rosel Lopez, ang inyong katropa sa pagbabalita. Dito lang sa Millennial Online TV. Tutok na mga katropa! Mga milenyo, pagod ka na ba galing sa trabaho? At gutom na sa maghabong pagtatrabaho? Pero wala kang pagkain sa bahay? Narito na ang sagot mga katropa. Ang Superman of Lechon, napapawi sa inyong gutom at siguradong mapapaanerize ka dahil sa tender juicy na jambo pa at siguradong malinis at bagong katay buhat sa farm. Kaya super masalasa at pangmasa pa. Ano pa hinihintay niyo mga katropa? Takbo na sa Superman of Pantenyo siniluan at bumili na baka maabusan ka katropa. Ayan ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Maraming salamat po. Milenyan Online TV is now signing off.